الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has blessed us once again to be able to study the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As you know, we have started Surah al-Baqarah. We discussed about, we were discussing about the characteristics of pious individual. We mentioned the first one, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen, which we talked about it in the previous episode. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And those who maintain the prayer. A question comes, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say, وَيُصَلُّونَ Those who pray. Rather said, وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ There's a difference between يُصَلُّونَ Those who pray are those who are, one, they have the one characteristic of pious individual and those who are maintaining the prayer. The difference is, if a person prays once in his or her lifetime, that will be a person who يصلون. They have prayed. Or maybe they pray once in a week, they miss a morning prayer, they might miss a uh, noon prayer, or they might miss two or three days and they pray. They are not those who maintain the prayer. The one who maintain the prayer are those who are really, really dedicated to the prayer. They know all their wajibat and muharramat related to salah, all the pure, uh, purities and impurities. They know about them, the jasat and taharat. They know how to do wudu. They, don't, they know how to do ghusl, all the prerequisites and all the steps that needs to be taken before adhan, before salah. They know, they're all aware of it. And also during the salah, they are aware of the pronunciation. They are aware of the ahkam and the jurisprudence of the salah. And also, Imam, the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'minin, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, has a beautiful narration where Imam says, everything has right upon you, even the prayer. And the right of the prayer, حق الصلاة عليك, the right of the prayer upon you is before the time of Adhan comes for you to sit on your prayer mat waiting for this time of Salah to come. Basically, you're showing it's a prayer, Salah is a prayer, a called prayer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is calling us. He is allowing us to go and communicate with Him the way that He has prescribed for us to communicate with Him and to communicate with Him. So we wait, if we had an important person that we want to meet, wouldn't we get there on time? Whomever that person might be, a very, very, very important person in our life, our hero, well, we're about, we have once in a lifetime chance to meet him. Definitely, we will go beforehand, we wait, we make sure the way that we are clothed, it's proper and everything, it's good. And we wait 10, 15 minutes, we arrive there early, so we, we make sure we don't miss the time. Salah, communicating, discussing our affairs and our problems with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the people who are the maintainers of prayer. وَيُقِيمُونَ salah, Which is the second characteristic of those pious people which Quran will guide them. The importance of Salah, no matter how many episodes we dedicate to the importance of Salah, it's not enough. But I want you, dear viewers, to go and read more books about Salah and about the importance of Salah, why we pray the way we pray. Alhamdulillah, books have been written and books have been translated. Try to find them and read them and ask and try to understand the Salah. And during it, like wudu, some people ask, how can we concentrate during the wudu? Well, if you start concentrating while you're doing wudu, inshallah, you will have concentration in salah also. It is mustahab recommended while you're doing wudu to read Surah Anna and Zanna. Basically, when you start washing your hand and face, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, while you're doing wudu, reading Anna and Zanna, the hadith and narration goes, when you do that, and by the time that you finish your prayer, you finish your wudu, and you finish your Surah Anna and Zanna, you finish both of them together, Allah will forgive your sins. Well, concentration in wudu, concentration in salah, that needs practice for me not to be distracted. If I'm really occupied with my life and I'm doing everything, time of salah comes, I jump, 
I will do here and there, maybe right or wrong, and then suddenly I say, Allah, I just pray and then go because I just want to finish the salah. Of course, I won't be concentrated. And I'm not sure if that's well, we say the acceptance of it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are we to judge? But it is us that we have to think of to ourselves. Is this salah, I'll give you a good, a good tool for you, inshallah, to have more concentration. Every salah that you pray, think of it to be the last salah. The last salah that you're about to pray, and after that, you have been informed that you will die. For example, on the day of Ashura, the day that the companions of the Imam, Imam Hussein they prayed on the noon of Ashura, which after that they were all murdered. How they prayed. Or for example, Hajr ibn Adi al-Kandi, one of the companions of Amir al-Mumini Ali ibn Abi Talib who was captured by the soldiers of Muawiyah, who, who was beheaded, his sons and his soldiers also. Before they behead him, they told him, Hajr, what do you want? He said, let me pray two rak'ah. Think of that last two rak'ah or the last salah. If this was my last salah, how I will pray it, basically. Because after the salah, I'm going to go and meet my creator. How the salah should be. Wouldn't it be with more respect? Wouldn't it be more proper? Wouldn't it be better wudu, better clothing and respecting to the salah or not? These are the people who are pious people. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ The third characteristic of a pious individual is that they spend out of what we have provided from them. Very important. Many beautiful discussions that we, inshallah, time allows us, we will discuss. Rizq. Rizq, we have two different kinds of sustenance. Rizq. One set of sustenance and rizq is the materialistic, the worldly affairs that we have. House, wealth, physical body, and you name it, all of our materialistic belongings. This is our materialistic rizq. And then we have spiritual and metaphysical, not physical, metaphysical, spiritual, we call it ma'nawi, rizq, sustenance, such as alm, such as status within the community and the society and the respect that we have and the reputation that we have. And intelligence. Some people are more intelligent. They are smart, smarter than other people. Not that other people are not smart, but they have higher IQ, for example, for the lack of a better term, and to make it closer to your mind. So this knowledge of us that we have, in addition to the wealth and reputation, this needs to be shared. This needs to be given. These pious people are those people who spend out of what we have provided for them. That's beautiful. Don't ever think, we should never think that what we have, it's based on what we have put our endeavor in. No. Everything min fadl rabbi as Prophet Sulaiman ala nabina wa alayhi salam has stated within the Holy Quran. When he received the kingdom, he said, Hadha min fadl rabbi. This is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing from me. On the other hand, we see the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say that what we have gained, for example, Qarun, he said, whatever I have gained, I have gained in myself as of wealth, as of knowledge, as of reputation. Whatever that I have, it's from my own endeavor. It's what I have put my blood and sweat into it. These verses of Quran channelizes our perspective that it's not from us. We have to genuinely, every time we have some blessings, we say, even that we might have put effort. I'll give you an example from my own uh, life. Every time, this is all again. Even this notion of, that is within me, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has, He has allowed me and blessed me for me to remind myself that everything I have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time that I give lecture and I come down from the podium or the pulpit, people say, MashaAllah, Shaykh, it was a good lecture. Shaytan comes and says, see, that was a good lecture you gave. You did put a lot of effort into it. 
hours and hours that you spent. See, be proud of yourself. That's nafsul ammara to besu. Want me, want me to become arrogant and have takabbur. The nafs that pushes me toward committing sin. Right away, right away we have nafsul lawama. And those nafsul mutma'anna, which inshallah all of us we're trying to achieve. I remind myself, hadha, even myself. I don't say to people, and sometimes I say hadha min fadlillah wa rasulah and ahl bayt alayhi salam. Whatever I was able to say, whatever I was able to communicate to you and all the knowledge that we have, it's nothing mine. It's all the narrations of Ahl Bayt and the verses of the Holy Quran. I was just putting it together and I came and reminded myself first and then the other people. So we always have to remind ourselves when somebody, somebody praises us, we say it within us and loud, This is from the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and nothing is mine. So, that's Every time that we read Quran, that is a good reminder that whatever I have, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yunfiqoon. Whatever we have, min ma, from. Allah hasn't said that everything that I have given you, give it to other people. We have another verse within the Holy Quran that Allah tells Rasulullah, don't hold your hand to your neck, basically you're not giving, being stingy, and not opening it completely wide, for, every, for everything that you have to give it to other people. No, but be between. Give to charity, pay your wajibat, which is khums and zakat, pay sadaqah in addition, you find a good institution, organization, community center, masjid, imam barga, Husseiniya, orphanage, whatever the charitable cause is there. After you have paid your khums and zakat, which is those are wajib, pay some charity also. Not in a way that you will basically endanger your life and the life of your family from everything that you have. Again, as we said, we have two sets of risk and sustenance. One is spiritual, mentally, emotionally, and the other one is physical and the worldly affairs. Knowledge, zakatul ilmi, nashroh, whatever knowledge that we have, it is obligatory upon us to share it with other people. Whatever that knowledge might be. For example, when we were in the States, people would come from overseas. The they were really completely new. They were really new to the community, to the society. Well, the knowledge that we had as far as the language is, is concerned for us to go and translate for them, to be their interpreters, and translate, and take them here and there to DMV to get their driver license, to find, open a bank account, and so on and so forth. This is the knowledge that I have. I need to share it with other people. Whatever that knowledge is. I'm in business. I'm a good businessman. I'm, mashallah, mashallah, I'm a successful businessman. Well, let me find the youth. These are all action plans that we are providing, basically. I'm a good business uh, person, businessman. Let me find the youth that I see they have the potential and bring them under my wings. Let them grow the knowledge that I have gained within business. Let me help my other community member also to gain business. I have learned a knowledge. Let me share it to other people. I'm a good uh, mother I was able to discipline and train and raise and coach my kids. Well, let me teach other sisters. I'm a good speaker. Whatever knowledge that I have, in whatever field that I have, zakatul almin ashroh, that's the narration, that I need to basically share it with other people. That's knowledge. Reputation, which in Arabic called ma'ul wajih. I have a reputation within the community and the society. People respect me. And I have that dignity. Allah has provided me with that dignity. Well, I need to, whatever I have at my exposure, to spend it and to give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahl Bayt alayhi wa salam. Inshallah, I will conclude with one story, a beautiful story. A scholar was telling me the story. He was present when the story happened. He said, I was sitting next to late Grand Ayatollah, said Muhammad Shirazi, may Allah bless his soul, who wrote more than 1,000 books and who established more than 700 organizations all around the world. Husseiniyah from Husseiniyahs, from Imam Bargas, from mosques, from uh, orphanage, you name it, from libraries, from hospitals, from clinics. MashaAllah, he was very, very active in providing uh, the needs of the community, basically. My uh, that person was saying that I was sitting next to the Sayyid. And the Sayyid was talking with a person from a wealthy country. 
That person, unfortunately, sometimes wealth brings arrogance. That person being really wealthy, sitting basically with a chest high and basically we say also nose high, that basically I have the wealth, sitting next to a, a grand ayatollah with all of his knowledge and piety. And this person said that I saw that the ayatollah is humbling himself and kind of humiliating himself and he's using his reputation kind of, for the lack of a better term, begging. He wasn't begging, but he was asking for donation from this person because he wanted to build another mosque or another hospital for the people. That person left and he didn't pay, basically. This individual, the scholar, said, I asked the Sayyid, Sayyid, I felt bad that I felt embarrassed the way that you humiliated yourself in front of this businessman, basically. You were humbling and humiliating yourself. You are Grand Ayatollah, you are Marja Taqlid, millions of people follow you. He said to this scholar, Sheikh, on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring me and he will tell me, Muhammad, with your hand, you wrote more than 1,000 books compiling the narrations of Ahlul Bayt and the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt for people to read and gain the knowledge of Quran Ahlul Bayt Thank you. You used your tongue and you gave thousands and thousands of lectures, hours of lectures for people to be guided. Thank you. You used your legs. You went to people's house trying to bring them together. You went to Majalis of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein. Thank you. Did you use your reputation or ma'al wajh for me or not? This is what I gave you. This azza, this mighty, this dignity, this honor I gave you. Did you use it for the sake of Allah, my, me and Ahl Bayt I will say yes. In that point where I was humiliating and humbling myself in front of that person, kind of I was begging him to pay me charity so I can establish Husayniya and establish hospital and establish orphanage for the people, that's where I was using my reputation. So action plan will be, let us find all what Allah has provided us with. Let me think, what are my potentials? What I have skills and make sure I use these skills, a portion of my time using these skills for the sake of Allah and Ahl Bayt Alayhi Inshallah, in the next episode, if we get a chance, we might bring another two or three examples of how we can give back to the community. We will conclude, inshallah, by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam, Imam Mahdi, ajalallah ta'ala faraj al-sharif, which is the most important dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hassan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhi sa'ati wa fi kul sa'ah. وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكن واردك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين